Hi everyone, I am Nutrix the Sim Guy. Welcome to another video about synthesis. Today. This is not going to be the video about the in-depth tour of the synthesis of the Novation Peak. No, 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 no. Today we're going to talk about the choices that they make for building the synthesizer and what they basically base their features on when they sell the device. So we'll talk about when they say analog where it matters and digital where it counts, we'll talk about that just to know what exactly that means. And there's something that really caught my eyes the first time I looked at the peak is this thing here. You've got new Oxford oscillators using two-way form generating techniques. We'll talk about that. Numerically controlled oscillators, NCOs. Never heard of that before. So what are NCOs? What is a numerically controlled oscillators? And there's also 16 digital wavetables. So a little glimpse about what are wavetables. So today, NCOs and wavetables, okay? So the Novation Peak is a really cool device. If you know anything about Novation, if you know about the synthesis in the NovaSynth, and the Ultra Nova and the base station. They're really cool and they sound really good. And this just adds on to that legacy of really cool sounding synthesizers. And I like the layout and the design of these synthesizers. And when you look at, uh, this is all metal. This is really heavy, all metal built. The Novation Peak is, is a really heavy, solid machine. Now, really rapidly, the synthesis, when you look at this, you go, well, oscillator one, two, and three, they, the three of them have the same structure, if you want. And that's where we really ask ourselves when they say analog where it matters and digital where it counts. So we have to start with the notion of what is digital in this synth and what is analog and where and why. And then it will open up the question to what are NCOs or numerically controlled oscillators. So the first thing is that the digital part of this is basically everything except two things, the filter and the amplitude. Actually, the distortion is also analog. So the filter is analog, the distortion is analog, and the amplitude is analog because it gives you that warmth that people are looking for in the sound of a synthesizer, especially because in a subtractive synthesis synth, the filter is king. You need that filter sound to define the synth. Of course, you need a good oscillator also. In this case, filter analog, distortion analog, and the amplitude, the amplifier is analog. So that's where you go, okay, this has at least that warmth that I'm looking for. They did make a decision though, not to use analog system for the oscillators. Many reason why. The first one is that analog systems if you have three oscillators, it means that if you have an eight voice polyphonic synth, you don't have three, you have three multiplied by eight. So that's very um, ambitious to have all of these oscillators in one box staying in tune because by heating up, which most analog synth will do, these will detune. So there's a choice in saying we're gonna put as a polyphonic synth, we're gonna put a digital oscillator and we want it to be stable and rock solid. Then the question is, how does it sound? Does the digital synthesizer sound digital or does it, does it sound analog? They use the word numerically control oscillator because it is a physical model of an analog synth. Novation is not new in this game. They've been doing simulation of analog synthesizers since they started the Ultra Nova and the Novas back in the days of, you know, in the 90s. So it's not new for them. And they've been at it so long that they know how to make it sound right and sound it really analog, you know. Of course, we can talk to people and some will say, well, you know, it's not real analog. It's not, but it sounds really good. Now, one of the reasons it sounds different or more analog, I would say, than other synthesizer is what they call the FPGA, the Field Programmable Gate Array. 
Um, it's part of a, basically a really high powered processor that runs really, really fast. And the single processor in, in this processor, in this case, uh, gives you a oversampling. And I'm going to talk a bit about numbers here is that in normal digital to analog converters, you'll have oversampling. So when you go too high in pitch, you kind of mask the errors that you have when you're running too fast. And we would usually call them artifacts of digital noises. And you have this in, in many synthesizers, digital synthesizers, because we're going a little bit beyond the limit of the high frequencies and hear these noises. Now, some people like them, some people don't, but one thing is true, they don't exist in analog world. So if you want to sound analog, you don't want these sounds. Um, so what they came up with is a very a dedicated processor that use FPGA. And this actually gives oversampling that is over 24 million times per second. So 24 megahertz of oversampling. I mean, usually you have like 512 times, you know, a thousand times oversampling. In this case, you got 24 million times oversampling. So it means that you can actually go really higher in, in oversampling. And in a way, it means that the artifacts that could exist, they're so high that they weigh beyond the hearing range that you can hear. So if there's any, you don't hear them. So basically there's none for human being to actually notice. So it really sounds natural. It really sounds really um, analog, as analog as it can be. And it means also that it reacts really rapidly. There's no like delay or latency from the device. So that's really a, a, the reason why they don't want to call it digitally controlled. It's just a marketing word, if you want to say that is a super high oversampling. So it means that it's super high in quality. So it won't sound with the artifacts that you could have in other digital synthesizers. What that gives though, is a lot more power than you expect from a box like this. When you look at this, you just say, well, I've got sine wave, triangular, sawtooth, and square. Stuff that anybody expects to have in an analog world. And for all of them, you've got shape, which is normal for the square wave. And if you're not sure about what I'm talking about, square wave, sawtooth, go back to my video about uh, oscillators. This does a change in the shape for sawtooth, sine wave, and triangular wave, which is not normal in the analog world, but this, because it's numerically controlled, it goes beyond the limit of analog. So it gives you that shape that you have. And I have an old JP8000 and you have the same thing. You can reshape oscillators shapes that are not supposed to be shaped in analog world. But this is really what the advantage of using this. You go beyond what you would be able to from the analog standpoint. Now, there's also the other thing that is called more. And when you get into more, then you, you, you jump into the wavetable and you can just run around and use wavetables. These are very, very short samples, if you want, of a real sound, and then you use them as an oscillator, and then you move around into the little slices, if you want, of time. So you can hear a part of the waveform and move it around. So the, they've got like 17 um, wavetable that they pick up and they decided to use, and it gives that other part of the sound. <laughs> To really go and understand how powerful these oscillators are, if you're in sawtooth, you can actually decide on the sawtooth density and the detunings. You can actually have, if you use what they call a super saw, that was the Roland word when they used it in the JP8000, that was the first time they invented that. In this case, they can have what they call the triple saw. So I guess it's only three sawtooth that appears 
out of one oscillator. So that one oscillator sounds like three of them, and then you have control over the detuning and how loud each of them are. So you can create that really wide sound that really is good for pads. It sounds really nice. And imagine you have three here, three here, and three here. So with three oscillators, you have the sound of nine different oscillators. It just becomes really massive with just three. So that's one thing you cannot do with real analog that you can do with numerically controlled oscillators. There's something else, there's a V-sync. If you know about sync modulation, one oscillator is syncing the other one. In this case, each oscillator can have a virtual sync. So it's like having another oscillator for each of them being the master of the sync for the syncing value of, of each of them. So each oscillator can be synced to a virtual oscillator that you don't hear, but you hear the syncing value. And here you decide how much you want it to sync. It's really powerful. You can sync without losing an oscillator, which is usually what you do when you sync two oscillators together. You lose a second one and you only hear the first one. In this case, you virtually sync it, each of them separately. So you can have three oscillators sync to different things. So again, a power that you would not have in an analog synth. And that really is, is another really wide spectrum of sound you can create with that. Really powerful. I'm going to do another video just on the in-depth values of all of this, but the concept of digital where it counts and analog when it matters, or I think it's really cool in this case because it sounds really, really rich. The filter is nice. The filter is basically a, a little bit upgrade from the base station two, but it has that really nice analog warm sound. The distortion is really nice also. There's two of them. There's an overdrive and the distortion. And all the delays, reverb, and chorus effects are digital. So they sound really clean and pure like you would buy outboard gear that would use normally. So this is a really good synth uh, sound-wise and the choices they made to have the warmth but the wide range of capacity for sound here, I think it's a good hybrid in a way. Um, so, and it doesn't sound digital at all. So pretty cool. I find it's a, a good mix of many things. And one of the cool thing also is because it's, it's digital, they could upgrade it. They could add features to this and it already sounds good right away. So I imagine it's just going to sound better in the, in, in the next years. I like it. I like the approach. I like the reason why they did it. And, um, Stay tuned for a full tour of all these synthesis values and a couple of uh, sounds to have a good example of how each of these parts make it sound so nice. That's it, guys. If you like what I'm doing, thumb up and see you soon. Cheers.